or invalid rather. So we know that it's invalid, and you see how much easier that was, right? It was it was a lot simpler. And then the last problem, number five. So this is number five. Number five is P or Q. Um, P and Q. If P and Q then R. And then we have Q and not R. And then we have, this one's a lot more complicated, and not Q. Let me try to do that right. P or Q, P or Q, P, if P and Q, then R. P and not R, therefore Q, not Q. Okay, yeah. All right, so um, last problem. Uh, we're attempting to assess the validity using reductio. We've gone through four um, arguments. This will be the final argument. Again, step one, um, assign, write out all of my statement letters. We have P, we have Q, we have R, P, Q, P, Q, R, Q, R, Q. Okay, so we have P, Q, R. We have three uh, statement letters. Next, identify my premises and my conclusion. We want this to be true, we want this to be true, we want this to be true, we want this to be false. We'll definitely start here because that's simple. Okay, and hopefully I won't confuse it this time. <laughs> um, so, uh, step one, um, identify all of our um, uh, statement letters. Step two, uh, make the distinction between our premises, we have three premises, and our conclusion, one conclusion. And now we begin. So, we know immediately that this will be simple, right? We have a false claim that we need to get, so it has to be not true, right? It has to be not true, which is false. So we know immediately that Q has to be true, right? Not true is false, so Q has to be true. Well, insofar as Q is true, we can see that we're going to be using this, um, this variable many times, right? So Q as being true, if this is true, and we have a conjunction, and... Well, we recognize that this has to be not false, right? This has to be not false in order for this to be true. So if this is true, if Q is true, and it is, not true is false. True, since this is true, this has to be false, right? Because if it's false, then not false will be true, right? Not false is true. True and true is true. So R has to be false, right? True and not false is true. So, so far we satisfied that, and we satisfied that. Now we go to uh, premise number two. We have a conjunction, and we have a conditional, right? So if P and Q, then R. If P and Q, then R. We recognize that we don't have the value for P yet, but we do have the value for Q and R. We recognize that this is false, R is false, right? So in order for R to be true, as soon as we recognize that our consequence of a conditional is false, right? R is false. And we recognize that R was false from, from uh, premise three, right? Because we needed to get this truth. So true and not false, meaning true, true and true, is true. Since this is, since the consequence of our conditional, the conditional statement, consequence antecedent, since the consequence of our conditional is false, we recognize that the only way to maintain truth is for this to be false, right? For this to be false, one of these claims has to be false, right? Um, so we would say that P, let's say that P is false. Right? Let's say that P is false. So if P is false and Q is true, if P is false and Q is true, this whole thing is false, and if this is false, and my consequence is false, then I have a true claim. So I satisfied this. And then lastly, I plug in for this, right? I have if P, right, if P is false, or if Q is true, right, if P is false, and if Q is true, well, what ends up happening at, at this point? Well, we recognize now, right, for this assessment that what we have here, P and Q, 
right? P is false, and Q is true. Q is true, right? If P is false and Q is true, well, this ends up becoming what? If this, if P is false, if P is false and Q is true, then this whole conjunct becomes false, right? P is false, Q is true. This whole conjunct becomes false. If this is false, then this is false, right? If this is false, then this is false, and that is true. Now we substitute P for false, right? P for false, or Q for true, or Q for true, and if it's, we recognize that if it's one of the disjuncts is true, right? if one of the disjuncts is true and Q is true, then the whole claim is true, right? So in this assessment, Q or uh, P or Q, what we can do is we can go back and we can see if any of these statement letters were used inconsistently. If none of the statement letters were used inconsistently, then the argument is invalid, right? So let's substitute false for P, false, or false or true is true, false and true, false and true is false, false and true is false, false, if it's false, then it is false, that's true, Q is true, and R is not false, true and not false is true, that's true. And then lastly, not Q, which is not true. If it's not true, it's false. I've substituted those letters in directly. I haven't had to use any of those variables inconsistently, which lets me know immediately that this argument is invalid. Right? So number five is also is also invalid. The whole point of me attempting to demonstrate uh, these arguments was to show you that you can use reductio ad absurdum um, as a very simple way of assessing the validity of your arguments. All that you need to do is recognize the relationship between each component part um, and the other statements within your argument, and then substitute your truth function to that statement letter. If the statement letter, as in this case, can be, if the truth function can be appropriated to a statement letter, without inconsistency, and you can arrive at an invalid structure, then you know your argument is invalid. If you have to be inconsistent in your appropriation of your um, um, truth function to your statement letter, then you recognize that your argument is valid. Um, hopefully that made um, reductio ad absurdum and the process of assessing truth validity a little bit more accessible. I appreciate you taking the time to watch my videos. I'm Dr. Jason J. Campbell. Thank you, and have a good day.